What's up, guys? Welcome to the first episode of The Backstop. I am BC. Joined along by c Brad. What's up? So welcome, hey, guys. Our first episode of The Backstop. Uh, what we'll be doing in this, uh, this show, guys, it'll be a weekly episode, maybe bi-weekly. That'll be determined in the next week. But we'll be covering MLB The Show news, MLB news, things around the community, etc. We'll be having special guests and many more things coming forward. But kind of our liftoff show. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with me, I'm BC. I go by BC Reviews 51 on YouTube as well as Twitch. And my partner in crime is c -Brett. So c go ahead and let everybody know uh, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, man. Make YouTube content, stream on Twitch, top 50 player eight times last year. Though a pretty good grasp on the competitive scene. And probably the worst sense of humor of anyone. So, yeah. <laughs> And also, not to mention, uh, he's kind of underplaying it, guys. Three accounts in top 50, and then will be the show 19. Three separate accounts. Am I right or am I wrong? In the same season, yeah. In, but... the, same, yeah, in the same season, guys. <laughs> so we have a very top player over there in Seabrev and myself, you know. But uh, I appreciate you joining me for this uh, show, Seabrev. Um, yeah, man. So we look forward to doing a lot of things, guys. Uh, but I think what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and dive straight into first impressions on MLB The Show 20. We're going to go over a few keynotes, some of the cards, as well as uh, we're going to be diving into patch 1.04, which is a new patch that some enjoy, some maybe not so much. Uh, we'll kind of <laughs> give our perspectives on it. Um, but to get started, uh, a few new legends in the game this year, Seabrev. Yeah, we got Mariano, we got Big Poppy, we got the big three from the Braves. Super exciting. Obviously, Mickey Mantle, the big one. Uh, his 99 car looks pretty nice, not going to lie. Expensive as hell, though. <laughs> it, it, it looks really nice. And, and the only thing, honestly, that's held me back from, um, from going for Mickey Mantle is the team collections being unsellable. But that's something we're going to dive into later in the show, guys. Um, but we have some returning legends uh, like Roy Oswalt, Eric Gagne, Duke Snyder, um, yeah, Bagwell. Hoffman. But, you know, we also have some new ones. Uh, one I like seeing was Juan Pierre. Uh, many people may not know who that is. Uh, some of the OGs probably do. Um, unless you're a big baseball fan like Seabrev and I. Um, Juan Pierre uh, Seabrev, uh, he got, goes in as, uh, actually as a prime card. Um, and maybe it would be a good opportunity for us, and maybe you being a top player, to explain uh, the difference between a prime card and your your basic diamond card. Yeah, so prime cards are just like the best years of a player's career, so the stats are going to be pretty juiced for like their best years. So Juan Pierre's best years were kind of right when he left the Rockies, which is hilarious. So <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, and this was actually yeah. when he was on the Marlins, is is yeah. all wrong. His first year that he left Colorado, they won the World Series on the Marlins. Oh, so, that's right. That was, that was the good. Josh Beckett uh, season. Yeah, that uh, was the Steve Bartman season for you. The for Steve you. Bartman, yes. <laughs> and you know, fun fact about Josh Beckett, uh, I went, him and I are the same age, and whenever – why I did Little League Baseball. Okay, one of the things, guys, if you're a baseball fan, you play Little League. Little League Baseball sticks with you throughout your life. And some of you kids watching this, if you're playing high school ball, Little League ball, remember, these are some of the times of your life that will ne they'll never fade away from your memory. And one thing that sticks out to me is doing All-Stars for Little League, 15, 14 or 15 years old. And we went to play, I'm from Houston, Texas. Um, right outside. And we played a city called Spring, Texas. And lo and behold, I was starting pitcher. It's elimination game. And guess who I'm facing? <laughs> Josh Beckett. <laughs> well, needless to say, uh, I pitched really good. But Josh Beckett hit a home run on me. And then he <laughs> proceeded to throw a one hitter against our team. And our team was elite. Um, but that's my first introduction to Josh Beckett. And then about three years later, the Marlins throw $15 million a year at him. So uh, great times <laughs> for Josh Beckett. <laughs> yeah, when, I was oh. on a, when I played on a travel team in Colorado, we had a little Kyle and a big Kyle on our team because this big Kyle was like, I don't know, we were like 12, 13, and this dude was almost six foot. And big Kyle turned out to be Kyle Freeland. 
So. Oh, Kyle Freeland, the lefty on the Rockies. Yeah. Dude, that is dope. Yeah, I like to see, and also one of the things that we're seeing around the community, we're going to dive back into these legends. I know we, part, guys, part of the show is we have no script. We are just freestyle going after this thing, and so I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, but another thing is um, I notice a lot of the, with MLB, of course, being on a suspension delayed, hopefully we're going to have a season, I'm hearing, late May to June as our possibility, but um, we do see a lot of actual MLB players coming around MLB The Show 20 now. Uh, I've seen Trevor May, who you know is a notoriously uh, known for streaming Fortnite uh, shooter games, uh, you know, first-person shooters. Um, but now we're seeing other people. Like, I was on Twitter earlier, and I've seen Big Meat Pete, Pete Alonzo, asking why in the hell he, he, he can't swing, and he only checks swings in MLB The Show. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think Big Meat Pete needs to use that X button like he does the stick. <laughs> yeah, I think he needs to stop working on his biceps and start working on his thumbs, bro. Probably. I love it. Um, okay, going back in, guys, uh, talking about the big three that we had. Uh, whenever I first heard about, you know, the big three, my first impression, I don't know if you remember this, Seabrev, was remember the Nasty Boys back in the days from the Reds? That would have <laughs> yeah, been <dude>. Dibble. <laughs> Good Lord. I, 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 oh, man. Uh, Randy Myers, Rob Dibble, and Norm Charlton. Those guys, the 90 Reds, were outstanding. They were the wire-to-wire -wire team. They started first, first place, never let up, and then swept the Oakland A's in four games as, I believe, three-to-one underdogs um, and go yeah. in and sweep the sweep. So I was kind of hoping for that because, you know, I'm relief pitching is kind of like, Super important to my gameplay. Um, but and then so whenever I've seen them. these, you know, Glavin, Smaltz, and Maddox, I mean, those are some great pitchers. And right now, we're only seeing the pre-order cards, which is probably the lowest version, is the lowest version of these cards. Um, now, when these signature series or whatever they decide to put out, I mean, we're going to be looking at some really good stuff here. Yeah, man, and Glavin's the reason I have 47 in my gamer tag, actually, if you want to know. Oh, but, okay. I remember well, you talking about this a while back, and I could not remember. Okay, yeah, give I me the story uh, on Tom him. Glavin. The 47. I love watching him growing up because it didn't, like, he didn't have the arm strength or the talent, really. He just, and he also just didn't give a damn on the mound. Like, <laughs> he was just going to throw you change-ups away the entire game. That and John Rocker mentality. Did, he did. So, that was pretty much it. He started busting people inside more when he went to New York, but his days with the Braves literally just spamming change-ups all game is hilarious and awesome. Yeah. I mean, him and Maddox, <laughs> I mean, two of the best finesse pitchers. I mean, I wouldn't say of the 90s. I'd say generally, like, going on one team, Maddox, Smoltz, and Glavin, I mean, to, in my opinion, Maddox was one of the best uh, location pitchers in history. Um, and movement, too. Yeah, and the movement. Oh, my God. And then, I mean, Smoltz, you know, of course, in the back end of his career, ended up in the bullpen, kind of pulled that Eckersley type thing, where Eck, if I'm sure you're highly familiar with Eckersley, started off at the Indians um, as a rookie, starting pitcher, and was an absolute beast. And whenever he, of course, went over to... The A's, I know he they went to the Red Sox from the Indians in a trade, which was an awkward trade at the time, uh, and then ends up on your team, the Oakland A's. And the first season he goes in as a reliever, and he is expected to be a starter the next season. I'm sure you know this story, right? Yeah. Okay. This and is then, when La Russa invented the closer. Exactly. <laughs> and so he ends up becoming one of the greatest closers of all times. But a lot of people seem to forget Dennis Eckersley. What just absolute beast of a starter. That delivery. I mean, everything about Eck was just awesome. Um, that's as part of these legend cards, uh, which uh, do we have a diamond Eck yet? I just have not noticed. Yeah, that. he's in evolution. He's one of the evolution picks. You know what? You are right. It starts off as a silver and Ebo's up. I'm um, trying to look up his stats. I think Eck, I think he might be the only pitcher with 400 wins and 400 saves or something like that. I believe Some you're right. Like I believe you're right. Now, Pretty crazy. <laughs> the, the two top hyped-up cards, other, wins. before we get into Mickey Mantle, uh, 
We had David Ortiz and Mo Mariano Rivera uh, debuted in this year's in this game cycle. Um, now Mariano Rivera, you know, we're provided with this 87 diamond, 99 postseason, I believe. I don't have my screen up, but I'm gonna think it was 98 or 99. I'm gonna guess 99 postseason, 87 Mariano Rivera. Um, yeah, that's from 99. Okay, good lord, I'm so happy I didn't come off as an idiot there. Um, but, uh, <laughs> not his, like an idiot when you say someone has 400 wins and 400 saves, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, dude, yeah, excellent. He's got 197 level. wins and 390 saves, which is still pretty crazy. Yeah, if they're almost 200, 400 as a pitcher. Now, I'm kind of curious where Smoltz would fall into that. As everybody knows, Smoltz, dominant starter, uh, kind of has that Eck effect, um, to where he starts, uh, John Smoltz starts out with the Braves as a starter, dominant starter. And then the back end of his career, I wouldn't even say he was he was he was uh, losing his stuff. Just put him in the pen. One of the greatest closers still uh, to this day, in my opinion, to ever grace that mound, especially in Atlanta. Um, well, Atlanta's kind of have a few issues with with relief uh, in the past ten years, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, but as we look at Mariner Rivera, I believe they gave him. As his 97 postseason, two fastballs, two seam, four seam, a cutter, and a slider. Now, in your opinion, as a top player, uh, is that an effective pitcher? Uh, not really, no. Um, he's going to need, they talked about giving him a quirk to make his cutter better than like other cutters. Uh, but the pre order diamond version doesn't have the quirk yet. So I personally think the 87 is not a very good card. It's just too hard to pitch to lefties. Because uh, cutters don't jam people the way they do in real life on this game. Like yeah, if you leave I've noticed it over that the too. strike zone and, and all. I think it's most people they want to go outside with the cutter. Um, do you see that a lot whenever you're doing your gameplay in ranked seasons? It depends on the handedness of the batter. I think most people try to go inside to lefties uh, with the cutter, but they definitely go outside to righties. Pretty yeah. much everything people throw with Mariano is glove side. Yeah, and that's what I meant. I mean, I was thinking, you know, righty, righty on righty, uh, you know, cutters on the outside. That's always kind of been my strategy, too. Um, but I've also, I haven't been the greatest. I'm not a top five player like like yourself. But, not um, yet. Yeah, I got some work to do, boys and girls. <laughs> Don't count me out. I Like, I'm not tapping out. Um, okay, so moving on to the other big hype player, Big Poppy, David Ortiz. Now, I started playing this game, guys, in MLB The Show 17. I fell into this community by accident, but that's a story for another day. Now, when I played in 17, I didn't know what I was doing whatsoever. Now, when MLB The Show 18 came around, I kind of started knowing my shit. Um, and I've always wondered, okay, A-Rod, Big Poppy, Randy Johnson. Those are the three I've all, and, you know, Josh Hamilton, but I've accepted the fact that Josh Hamilton got cracked up, and not in a good way. <laughs> and so, but imagine yeah, a, a Josh Hamilton in this game or a Randy Johnson. That's why every year my cap is a Randy Johnson. So I try to relive that childhood and that moments of Randy Johnson on the hill just dominating, making people look stupid, killing pigeons, everything in the world. <laughs> but we get Big Poppy, David Ortiz. Now, considering we only have an 86 diamond, I want to say that was an 02 or 03 postseason or a breakout card, right? Um, 03 breakout. 03 breakout card. Um, I know he had diamond hitting, and, you know, we could kind of expect some common fielding out of Big Poppy, kind of the Frank Thomas effect um, from last year. So, one thing I remember about David Ortiz, this card in particular, is he does have that 99 pop versus righties. Now, versus lefties, I think he had 60 to 65 power versus lefties. So, the way I look at it uh, as an, I'd say, average. Let me put that in quotations because I have not played ranked seasons. That's going to start after this, after this show. Um, I just can't see him being my starting first baseman at this point in the game. Uh, how would you feel about this card, and what would you suggest to uh, the grinders that are just starting, building their team, and using this card in ranked seasons? Uh, one interesting thing I've noticed about this 86 David Ortiz is he actually does not get auto-shifted, which is absolutely insane to me. <laughs> that is mind-blowing. I, I can't believe he doesn't get shifted. So you would think I guess the creepy effect. 
Yeah, I guess pulling the ball is good with him. Uh, but actually, 93 contact, 99 power versus right is really good. Uh, you face righties most of the time, too. And the beginning of the year is probably the best time to start platooning people as well, trying to generate some value from your bench. So I think he's a good card, to be honest. And I'm excited that his, he's an 86 overall with 99 power because that just yeah. tells me how how juiced his other cards are going to be. Yeah, I'm just stoked for that. I, I have a feeling it's going to be, like, I'm. they have the Sandberg. They have a few, like, like the BGO signature series. I have... It's just we have not seen the abundance of signature series like we did last year. I don't know if this year they're trying to make that more of an elite brand of cards to be released. But with very few, I'd say there's under for sure under 10 uh, signature series cards in this game right now. Um, I just kind of see that as they're saving that for some of like, like these pre-order cards that we're seeing. Small Sklavin, Maddox, uh, Big Poppy. Um, who's another one? Uh, we like forgot Mo. about Sheffield too. Yes, and the oh my god, the Gary Sheffield Silver Silver Slugger card. Have you had a chance to use that card? <laughs> no, I haven't used him. But I haven't either. Oh god. man, I see videos sometimes, <laughs> and I get a little jelly. But I understand that you know I'm not ready to spend fifteen hundred on the game right now. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now. I just think we got the wrong legend with a bat wiggle for his batting stance. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Tell me who you're talking about because I didn't pick up on it. Bonds. Oh, man. If, yeah. I, if even give us Reggie Stalker, I would be fine with that. <laughs> I, I really would. I wasn't around here for the Reggie Stalker days, but I've I've heard the stories of the myth and the man of, of the, the virtual freaking Barry Bonds known as Reggie Stalker. Um, he was fun, man. He's uh he's the same situation as you was at Sheffield right now though, because you got to you had to spend a ton of money to get him in the beginning. <laughs> he was oh. a collection. He was the NL collection, I think. Now, two other cards that I see introduced back into this game, which I say that as they may have been in prior cycles, as I only started really in eighteen, but one that I like a lot, uh, set two headliner Jimmy Rollins, um, ninety one yeah. diamond. But kind of I mean, surprised they gave him a veteran card. Yeah, same. I kind of thought his early years were better than his later years. If I'm wrong on that, let me know. But And one uh, thing about that card, shortstop primary, zero secondaries. True, yeah. People love their switch hitters, though. I've been seeing people using Jimmy a lot. He looks like a pretty good card. Uh, a little bit slower than I was expecting, but seems yeah, solid. I just, I just pulled up the my community market to look at some of these and i just noticed 87 speed for j raw now we gotta remember byron buxton's got 99 speed as a, as a face of the franchise which we're gonna jump into shortly um i kind of see them giving a better jimmy rollins card in a few months here oh yeah for sure he'll get a sig or at least a at least an mvp card yeah by the I way mean, i he... hope so they better I mean, he probably shouldn't have won that MVP, but still had a hell of a year. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the Altuve thing, you know what I mean? But that's a story yeah. for another day. Let, uh, we'll let other people d debate on that. All right. Just look at Matt Holiday's year that year. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, uh, Matt Holiday had some great seasons that were kind of over overshadowed. Um, now, just uh, a few low-tier uh, cars that have been put in that we haven't seen higher versions of. One being uh, Dave Kingman. Nice to see him in the game this year. Um, yeah, I know he has a silver, and I haven't seen. I actually, I'm looking at him right now. Uh, on his silver, boys. Okay, we all know about Jorge Soler, but Dave Kingman, uh, with his first card, 77 silver, which is a 75 breakout, has uh 80 power versus like the contact sucks straight up 54 44 split. That's ass. Um, 44 <laughs> vision. It's in my opinion, that's good enough for all star now. It'd be R. Whenever you get out of that, I don't see this as being a bench bat, even a bench bat outside of BR. But I think this is a great option for BR with 80 power versus righties, 104 power versus lefties, which I actually was able to use this card. And I'll be honest, I, I nuked a couple pitches with this card. <laughs> so I'm excited yeah. to see what they give him um, as far as... Uh, his uh, diamond card will be. I'm going to guess it's going to be probably first base. 
Because I think he was yeah, more known as a first a, baseman than an outfielder. For those who don't know Dave Kingman, he was kind of like the original Joey Gallo. Just like home mm-hmm. runs or nothing. Pretty much struck yeah. out a ton. <laughs> and, and what I <laughs> love time, about like, some of these cars coming in, people like some of these young cats, like no disrespect on them either. Like They wouldn't know who some of these people are if it wasn't for this game. So I also think this game is also helping our youth like that played some of this game um, with understanding the history of baseball. And some of these players that are kind of like John Franco being introduced as a 75 silver. Um, John Franco, hell of a reliever there, lefty. Um, I always get him and John Rocker confused. Don't know. I don't know why. But <laughs> I guess because I. random two people to confuse. <laughs> yeah. I guess they the John thing and like. closures. But when yeah. they announced it, I really thought it was John Rocker. And then finally, when I seen the card, I was wrong the whole time. It's John Franco. But, um, okay, c- considering we've uh, talked about the legends, I think there's one left that's kind of important that we should talk about. Um, Mickey Mantle. We do have two versions mm-hmm. at this point. We have the uh, 86 Diamond, the 51 uh, Rookie card, and then uh, we have that 99. Have uh, you touched that 99 whatsoever? I haven't used him, but he looks dope. The only thing that bothers me is the vision. 91 vision for an in-game card is kind of low, but I mean, everything else is insane. <laughs> uh, my... And you can, I don't know if you knew this, BC, but the collection rewards have prestige diamonds. So yes. since they're already unsellable, you can just go right into the prestige, and then if you hit all the stats, you get plus three to every stat on those cards. This would probably so... be a good opportunity. Maybe you could inform the listeners on our viewers on how to actually do that where to go and presti- use the prestige and increase the worth of that card yeah so there's only a limited number of players that can get it right now as of right now it's only the first inning bosses and the collection rewards so that's snyder helton oswalt and then sheffield biggio mantle uh, keep in mind for the first inning bosses you will have to lock them in and make them unsellable in order to make the prestige diamond so that's a choice you'll have to make Uh, but you go to player programs the first step is to lock them in and make them unsellable and then you get these missions unlocked so like for todd helton you have to match his first half of his season from the card that it's from and then once you hit the stats they're mostly online or all online i think Uh, you get the red diamond or the prestige diamond of the card which is a card, the same card, but with plus three to every single stat. So, contact power, vision, fielding, speed, everything gets plus three. So, pretty and, cool. And if I'm correct here, like when it's online, you can actually go in Diamond Dynasty, play the CPU, and gain your stats there as well. Am I right? No, not for the prestige diamonds. Not you on the play prestige. People. Okay. Yeah. So, that's one clarification, guys. If you're looking to prestige up, you have to do it. Rank seasons, BR, and pretty much that's it. That's true, yeah, good point, too. If you draft the card in BR, you'll get credit towards the stats, even if you don't have the card yet locked in. So, Yes. So, guys, uh, that's us going over the legends, the new legends in the game. Uh, but one thing we kind of like to detour into is uh, the face of the franchise, which Team Affinity with a little revamp this year, um, which I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's awesome. Like, some of the cards in here, I mean, even if I just go, like, the lowly Orioles, and I scroll over, one thing you get at every Team Affinity at 25 is a a prospect. Not sellable, but a prospect. And, honestly, some of these cards are ranked season usable. Some of them are sneaky good. I got a couple to talk about for sure. Like, right now, my whole squad is, is... face of the franchise and louis robert um but (laughs) these face of the franchise i mean guys i think if somebody is looking just to grind build a squad i mean do you have any as a top player knowing the game inside and out like you do i mean you've obviously put way more time into this so far than i have um how do you feel about face of the franchise the system the only thing that I kind of don't like about the system, but I understand it on the part of SDS, is the exchange for 10 points, where somebody can basically go in and buy these cards. Now, oh yeah, that's, that's not our can, only option. 
we do have um, other options of being able to unlock these cards, which I know you've done. You've actually put out videos on YouTube about this that caught a lot of traction. So um, that is Showdown. So if maybe you can explain uh, to people, and then uh, what we'll do, guys, in the description of this video, we'll have a link to, if you want to check out what Seabrev is about to talk about, we will link in that video in the description. If you want to know how, okay, I want to knock out these team affinities, but I don't want to play 250 innings versus the computer to get five points. There is another option, other than exchanging and doing uh, CPU games. There's Showdown. So let's talk a little bit about Showdown, Zebra. Yeah, um, just to get it out of the way in the beginning, uh, the exchanges are almost a necessary part of SDS's business model. Yeah. <laughs> Having people dump money into the game for cards is like what keeps them afloat. So I definitely get it. It sucks. Uh, but if you're no money spent, I think grinding these phases of the franchise is the way to go. Uh, and the best way to do it is through the new game mode, Showdown. Um, you do have to be kind of decently good at the game, even if you beat it the slow way. But basically it is, is it's you draft a team BR style, and then you go through these moments and boss battles against the computer. And then the final boss, you're down. They have 15 runs. It's hitting only, and you're down by a certain number of runs. You can gain runs throughout the showdown to make it easier on yourself at the end. Uh, but you got 20 outs to work with, and it's a revolving inning that never ends, and you got to end up winning by the end. So you have to end up with 16 runs. Yes. But if you beat a whole divisional showdown, you get 20 points towards a team affinity, and the face of the franchise cards are at 50 points. So you got to beat it three times to get a card. But yes. it's a pretty nice way to grind for free if you can win and also as i've seen another option is the um march to october now yeah let's talk about march to october for about a, a 30 <laughs> seconds here yeah, hell no, it, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> it works it, don't it, get me wrong it, it but it work. takes you legit 12 hours to beat one and that's you're not exactly what i've been hearing 12 hours okay guys as we talked about march to october uh that's something I, I think we both can agree. That's four of a fun mode, quote unquote. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for all your showdown needs, guys, don't forget, look down below, video description, link to Seabrass video. Over like 30,000 views or some shit. So good job on that video, man. Actually, I found that very informative, and it helped me a lot with unlocking a bunch of the face of the franchise cards. Speaking of face of the franchise, let's take a moment to dive into some of the cards. Um... Now, first impressions, uh, who are some of your favorite face of the franchise cards? I know you've used some in ranked seasons, and I know there's going to be review videos coming. Guys, if you ever wonder, how good is this card? Is that worth doing? Well, I got my man over here, Seabrat. Stop card it, you're going to make me blush. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's a very unique thing and stuff that's never been done, uh, but it's a review of cards. Um, so if you're wondering, is this card worth the grind? Check this man out right here. Uh, his link, uh, both of our Twitch, our YouTubes, is probably going on both of our channels. But be sure to check out some of those videos, guys. They're very informative. I'm not just, you know, I'm not just patting you on the back, but pat on the back. Good job, bro. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but face of the franchise. Okay. I don't know what you're going to say, but first impressions, I think everybody likes Joey Gallo. But yes, sneakily, our Lord and Savior, Mr. Gallo. Mr. Gallo, dude. But oh my <laughs> God. It's the 112, 114 power. Are you freaking kidding me? The 28 dude, vision. But who cares? It's the best part power. about Gallo is he's got top tier fielding. They yes. gave his field, That's insane. I've seen people putting him at second base. I've seen people <laughs> yeah. put him at shortstop, and it works. I'm like, <laughs> holy sheep shit, Batman. But whatever works, bro. I mean, if you don't have a good second baseman, you want to throw face of the franchise Gallo in there, hey, that's up to you. But if he boots it, that's your fault, not Joey Gallo's. <laughs> it's not SDS's fault. <laughs> now, okay, sneakily, one of the cards that I like the most. Now, this is just from practicing, going in, you know, to practice mode, doing legend, the stuff I've been doing to get good, as we talked about off camera. Um, Byron Buxton, center field. Twins Team Affinity. He's an 87 diamond. Now, the stats don't reflect 
Now, defensively and speed-wise, yes, the stats reflect it. But have you had any experience with the Byron Buxton card? Because I am loving that card. Buxton is a total glitch. First of all, you're getting in-game fielding and speed on day one. Mm -hmm. He's the best defensive center fielder in the game right now. He's better than 99 Mantle defensively. I didn't even know that. And his uh, hitting stats don't even do it justice because his no. swing is so glitchy. Dude, I... And they're, I not even, they're not even that low, to be honest with you, compared to some other guys. Like Joey Votto's power. Let me look at this real quick. So Buxton has, like, low 60s power. Joey Votto has 74 power versus right. So, and Buxton has, like, 67, I think. So yeah, he has 65-67 split on power. But that, yeah. that's still... I mean, I honestly feel like this is... If I had to do a mental retake I, and not knowing the stats, I'd say he's 80-80 split on power. Yeah. I mean, that's the way he plays. The uh, exit velos he gets on his swings are crazy. Yes. He hits way above his stats. It An reminds me of that MLB The Show 19 chipper exit velo. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I'm, I know you know what I'm talking about. The chipper yeah, Joe's man. exit velo was cracked. And I really feel like this Buxton card, once people start to discover how good he is, this will be something people will be looking at more into and maybe going after that as one of their first team affinities after Gallo. But we all know everybody wants Joey Gallo. Now, sneakily, mm -hmm. give me your, your top two. Top team two. Of, face Ooh. of the franchise. Like, if I, if, you, uh, if I had to say, okay, you could only use these two face of the franchise cards, position players. We're not talking Otani. Uh, position players, what are your two most cracked in your opinion? Face of the franchise cards. So, if you ask me, like, position players like that were stuck in my lineup the rest of the year yes. that I had to use, I would say Buxton is definitely on there. I didn't and I'd see probably that coming. Go, I'd probably go Gallo as well, because he can play third or outfield, and his fielding's really good. No. Uh, but I'll, yeah, I'll, I agree with you on Byron. He's so heavily underrated it's insane it, one of the is. best cards in the game I, i'm honestly very surprised that i did not think he would be in your top two he's he's my top like okay i love joey gallo like who i can't if you're in the mlb the show community and you don't like joey gallo like you're wrong bro all right <laughs> but let's be honest okay joey gallo aside i'm honestly gonna say byron buxton which I'm so surprised you said that because I didn't expect it at all. But Byron Buxton and, believe it or not, Carlos Correa, 89 Diamond, face of the franchise, Astros Team Affinity, that card is an unbelievable diamond defense, diamond hitting. I mean, he, he what, what, find, what kind of trips me out, 63 speed makes sense. Six, only six. This is like Brian McCann stats, right? Stealing. <laughs> Six steal <laughs> attribute. How the F did that happen? Does that make any sense? Him, they had to keep him below a 90 overall somehow. You're right. That's <laughs> what they did. But 67 vision. I mean, 76, 95 splits versus righties. And 99, 75 versus lefties. So, where you're losing on power versus lefties, you're gaining in contact. And 67 vision, I'm sorry. But if you're not, if you can't have a 67 vision, it's a you thing, not that's a, a card thing. <laughs> and on the lower difficulties, that's plenty for yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're cracking dingers with Joey Gallo at 20, mid-20 vision, you got no excuses with Carlos Correa. So, I really, really like the Correa card a lot too, man. 97 arm strength. He's going to make every throw from the hole. Uh, and I've always loved players that are like, there's no way to pitch to him. Like, how do you pitch to Correa? If you throw a righty at him, he's got 95 power. And if you throw a lefty at him, he's got 99 contact. Exactly. Like... <laughs> it's, it's a can't miss, really. Yeah. Uh, now, pitching as face of the franchise. I, I have one, as you're going to know. It's Otani. <laughs> I mean, I, when I go in my second game of ranked seasons, I'm starting Otani. I've got to try out Garrett Cole. So because I packed him, and it's Garrett fucking Cole. Um, <laughs> but Otani looks so good and there's that other factor if you ever go to his card and you hit that triangle to look at the stats you're gonna see he's got a four seam that could top out at 100 101 probably um he's got a slider 80 it was 82 83 84 miles per hour 
uh, a splitter, which is I, I think is a super important pitch for a starter to have in this game, uh, as much as a circle change. And uh, that curveball, going very slow. But if you also, if you go to that card and hit the square button, you look at his offensive stats, <laughs> the card slaps, baby. Uh, Where's well, vision? Got 50 vision. All right. I respect that they gave him 50 vision. But um, versus righties, he has a split of 86 contact, 87 power. And for a starting pitcher, this is a lovely card. This reminds me of, was it 18 or 19? There was that Future Stars Otani. I believe that, that was, was 18. I 18. Think. This is what this reminds me of. The Future Stars Otani right here. Now, what's one thing I have not figured out? If you want to go to the bench during a game, you can't bring Otani in from a starting pitcher as a bench bat. Am I right? Uh, there's a way. <laughs> Please, leak. There's always a way. <laughs> Please, leak. So I actually think people are using Otani wrong by starting the, by starting him. So because they're allowing people to use openers this year, it means you can use starters out of the bullpen. So mm -hmm. you're not technically allowed to use a starting pitcher as a pinch hitter until you run out of bullpen arms. But let's say you end the inning at your seventh hole, you can bring in Otani as a pitcher, and then he'll be your hitter in the nine hole. So I think he's the best long reliever in the game, at least. That's kind of smart. Yeah. You you're can middle. use him as a pinch hitter as long as he pitches first. So you're so. you're basically mentally OP on this fucking game. I would have never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> so there, well, I, hey, Game Shark 101, MLB The Show by Seabrab, guys. A little Otani trick. Okay, as far as starting pitching or closing pitching in Team Affinity, Otani, or do you have another opinion? Well, there's only three of them. Right. There's Boyd, Snell, Otani. Boyd is trash. I've heard Everyone some stuff about Blake Snell, though. Yeah, Blake Snell's new delivery is glitched, and the ball comes out pretty much from the back of his head. So <laughs> it's really hard to pick up, especially in higher difficulties. So our reaction time's a little cracked against Blake Snell. Yeah, the ball comes out nowhere near where his hand is when he releases it, so it's kind of hard to see. So between Blake Snell and Otani... You have to put Snell's one in rotation. Snell's a better pitcher. Otani's a better card. So our, our Otani's more of like the fan fun card. Blake Snell is win me games card. I I mean the biggest thing with Otani is controlling him as a pitcher because he's pretty wild. So that's why I say Snell's a better pitcher, but I think Otani's a better card overall for sure. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, he's was when he does have lows, you know, walks per nine and home runs per nine, sixty is. I think. Um, yeah. That's kind and of a, very, a liability. A very slow, unique delivery, too, which is hard to use on analog pitching. Yes. Uh, I, I don't analog one. pitch, but I know that's where I have to go eventually, and it scares the living shit out of me. <laughs> but I will be going there soon. Um, I just okay. want to take a moment to express how upset I am that the Tigers' face of the franchise was not Miguel Cabrera. How I does that happen? Good. Honestly, like, all due respect to Matthew Boyd, Miggy's the face of the franchise. I don't give a shit for, who's in the back of his career. It has been forever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Verlander, can you think of a bigger Tiger in the last 15 years? No. I mean, Scherzer was there, and people forget about that. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, there was another big pitcher that came from there. Bryce I just, came over. Yes. And who was the other uh, Annabelle one? Annabelle Sanchez was Annabelle. there. Annabelle, yep. They actually had a great squad back then. Shit just didn't mesh. IRL. Um, well, they lost in their prime because their bullpen blew every lead in the playoffs. <laughs> that's a true so. story. Like I know the feeling as a Cubs fan. The like second, it... <laughs> the second Verlander or Scherzer or Price left the mound, they just gave up runs immediately. Okay, quick, quick round right here. Team collections. I have found, I've only unlocked a few, but I've been very picky with who I've done. My opinion, and you're going to love this, and we haven't talked about this whatsoever. Oakland A's team collection, Sean Doolittle, 88 Diamond. I love this card. I absolutely love this card. Have you, have you, I'm sure you've been an A's fan, you have to have touched this card so far. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the pitch selection, three pitches sucks, but I think he makes up for it with the dominance that he brings. Yeah. By the way, Doolittle for trying in one of the best win-win trades of all time. Oh, <laughs> dude, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I miss Doolittle as an A. Anyway, uh, relief pitching early in the game cycle is really at a premium because there's not that many good players. Same with left-handed pitching, so the Doolittle card fills both. His per nines across the board are really good. Even the walks per nine is 90, which is really high. And it's a pretty cheap collection to do. The A's only have one diamond. And Matt, it's Matt Chapman. Chapman. Who sells yeah. for like 20K. So you could reali- realistically doing buy now on everyone, you could pick up Doolittle for like 35, 40K. And honestly, I think-, I think if he was on the market, that's where he'd be settling about 25 yeah. to 35K. That's about where Gagne is now. And Doolittle is probably just as good because he's a lefty. So. Mm-hmm. Well, they have actually made lefty relievers a little more accessible to us this year, thank goodness. And also with the option of being able to go to a different, an alternate starter is a great option. Like, this this three-batter minimum kind of changed the game, let's be honest. Um, (laughs) It's a big game changer. But, talking about game changers, we have had a few patches. Um, So, so on our way out, uh, guys, we are recording on... uh, March the 21st, uh, nighttime, um, is patch 1.04. Um, I've seen some people that like it. I've seen some people that say they have, they see no difference. And I've seen some people more than any, uh, they don't like it. Um, but just kind of touching on that, uh, what they did is they fixed a little issue we had with button accuracy where, you know, it got stuck in the red. You'd have shitty throws. Um, and a little bit of changing to the hitting difficulty in Diamond Dynasty. Um, I know you did stream last night, and you played a little bit. So, first impressions on patch 1.04, Zebra. Oh, man. How am I going to say this without... I mean, regardless of how, what opinion you have on it, some crowd is going to get mad at you. But uh, yeah. it still felt... P- purely opinions, guys, okay? <laughs> yes. It still felt okay to me. There were instances where I had PCI right on ball and I got a low exit velo. Uh, but there were also instances where I had PCI right on ball and I got perfect, perfect home runs. So mm-hmm. the biggest change I notice is you get perfect, perfect less often. Like, I think it's more strict. Like, you got to be right on the ball now to get perfect, perfect. Uh, because pre-patch, if you kind of had the ball kind of close, sometimes you would get perfect, perfect. Now I just think they made it really strict. So, like, it'll look like your PCI is right on the ball, but if you just barely miss, you might get good squared or you might get good okay. Yeah, and that's something, like, honestly, in my opinion, as an IRL baseball fan, you put Mike Trout up to the dish, I'm sorry, but sometimes it's called gravity. Sometimes... (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes he can square it up and it's going to be a line out. Sometimes you can square it up. It'll be a ground ball. I mean, not much, but it does happen. It's called gravity, you know? Um, But I I have noticed myself since the patch. I haven't played comp yet, like, competitively, but I will will have a better take on this next episode because I am going to jump into the abyss of ranked seasons today. Um, Good luck, my friend. I, 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 I don't see a problem here. Um, now, do we love putting up 20, 30 runs a game? Sure. Um, but do you also want to have competitive pitching at some times? Yeah, you know, maybe not. But everybody has a different focus, a different directive, a different style of play. May that be, I'm a dominant hitter, I'm a dominant pitcher. But honestly, in my opinion, who who is really winning games on just saying, you know what, we'll put up two runs a game, I'm going to pitch my ass off, I'm good. It's not in a reality. Um, but what they did, guys, um, as we dive a little bit further into this, I noticed um, they're trying to use the beta, which I like that uh, approach, as a counter to what your perfect perfect is going to be. So they're batting uh, the, from the beta. It came out to a, an average around about of uh, 850. Batting average, perfect, perfect. So you're getting rewarded uh, 8.5 times out of 10. Not a bad structure, in my opinion. I kind of feel like maybe it's a little bit higher than that prior. 
Um, have you noticed the perfect perfects kind of going down a little bit since this 1.04? Yeah, I honestly felt like pre patch it was higher. I was hitting higher than 850 on perfect perfects. They were pretty much like guaranteed hits for me. Uh, and a lot of them were home runs. Now, the biggest thing I'm seeing is a lot of perfect, perfect fly balls to the track that are outs on guys with lower power, um, and a lot more perfect liners for just, like, singles and doubles. So yeah, perfect I'm, grounders, too, are pretty much just outs most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you see that you perfect, get. perfect, you know you're getting 100-plus velo, and, you know, your odds are, I mean... 850 is your now we got all got to understand you could go up there you know get to the plate put up three perfect perfects in a row and get three outs it's just it's how can you put it it's not a guarantee there will be streak it's streaky is the best way to say it i would guess um but you know if you're up there putting up say 10 perfect perfects a game you're probably going to be winning the game. I mean, I say more. Say you put up 15 perfect perfects a game. You're probably going to be winning that game. Mm -hmm. um, now, they did fix a little bit with check swings. Honestly, in my opinion, check swings were not much of an issue in MLB The Show 20. It was really something that was a, a pain in the ass in 19. But at least they did that. Now, um, one thing that I noticed from 1.04 on the hitting is uh, when their exact words, when swinging early on an outside pitch, fly balls and line drives would be labeled rolled over, quote unquote. Um, that that word that would would have been labeled rolled over are now going to be labeled out in front. Um, how do you see that from a comp perspective? I mean, it's nice just because people rely on the feedback so much to know how they're doing. So yes. it doesn't feel good when you loft a fly ball to left field and it says rolled over because that doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Um, but I will place. I will say post-patch I have hit a rolled over fly ball, so I don't know if they fixed it all the way. Right. But I've also seen out in front as well. So I mean, that's I one know. thing we all fall back on is, you know, if we have a weird at bat, we always go back. It's human nature in this game. Go back to the feedback. And see where did I go wrong? And you see a perfect swing. Shit happens. It's 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 part of the game. I mean, but they are trying to roll a little bit of reality into this, so I can respect that. Um, yeah, and just to touch on the feedback really quick, I think the disconnect between what the feedback's telling you and the what the feedback actually looks like is the core issue of why a lot of people are getting mad because they're not actually looking at the ball. So the feedback's kind of weird because it's a big yellow circle for your PCI this year. And sometimes people will barely have the ball inside the yellow circle. They'll be like on top of it and to the right of it. But the game will say good squared up and they'll be like, oh, that was a good squared up ground out. That sucks. But like if you look where your PCI was, usually the ball kind of follows that. So like... So one thing that um, I noticed is, um, especially this is a big deal for some casuals, not so much for top players such as yourself, um, the change in PCI. Um, it's very different this year. There's many options you can use. You can use just the diamonds, altitude, circles in the middle, which a lot of people don't know. Um, those little circles and diamonds mean something. If one's bigger than the other for a reason. But we'll focus in on that on a later episode. But with I consider this a tweaked hitting engine. Um, I don't see it as much different. But um, how do you feel about the change in PCI? Did it bother your game any or did it help your game? It helped my game a lot, honestly. I love being able to see. So I have it so the inner and the outer circles fade out when the pitcher starts his motion. Mm -hmm. So I love being able to see the barrel of the bat where my perfect, perfect zone is, but then everything else visually not in my way. So it gives me a better opportunity to see the ball better. So, so. tell everybody the Seabrab approach to hitting. Do you use just <laughs> diamonds, altitude, or circles? You know what's hilarious is I haven't even changed it except for the fade out. <laughs> so it's no just, joke. It's Dude, yellow circles. I have experimented yeah. with like six different PCIs. I hit on the way you're hitting for a little bit. And then I said, fuck this shit. I am horrible. <laughs> and so I changed it to just the old school little, you know, wedge PCI. 
and the little diamonds in the middle. And I fade away the outer as, like you say, the picture goes into motion. Um, now, for casuals, this is kind of a big change. Um, I say casuals, that's not a rude word. Um, that is just a way of distinguishing uh, very competitive players such as Seabrev, Pitching Rebel, etc. from people that play when they want to, play to have fun, and don't give a shit about their rating. All right? Um, which is a thing. There's a lot of people that love franchise, road to the show, and it, you know, it also rolls over to that. Um, but touching on patch 1.04. Um, one thing that they did indicate is we talked about the perfect perfect. We talked about, um, one thing we didn't touch on is good squared up. Now, from the notes that I'm reading is you have, uh, on squared up, it's a 60-65% chance of getting a hit on a good squared up. Do you feel like that's a accurate number? Or is that seem a little high? That sounds about right on what I've been experiencing. Two out of three hits. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's my opinion of 1.04 in opinions only, guys. As I've stated before, I love the game. I'm not on this man's level yet. Yo, watch out, though, bro. I'm coming. Anyways, <laughs> looking at this as for sure a top 10 player. I don't know where you rank this year, um, but top five, in my opinion. Top 10, no doubt, are out of the park. Pimp. Out of this fucking park. Opinion on 1.04. Let's hear it. Alright, so hitting is definitely worse. There's much more RNG when you put the PC, PCI on the ball. I think it's much stricter with perfect perfect. Like, you get them way less often. However, I don't think it's really bad for the game, especially long term. Like I said earlier, when we start getting better cards, 99s at every position... Uh, it's probably a necessary change, and I would just like to see people try to have a little bit more fun. I mean, exactly. I realize being good at this game is like a big deal for a lot of people, but mm -hmm. to just go down the rabbit hole of the game is ruined because of this patch, I think is unhealthy, because this game provides us a lot of fun in ways besides just winning. And yeah, it's frustrating when you square something up and it's an out, especially in a big spot, but we're playing a damn game where Mickey Mantle can hit against Sean Doolittle. Like, it's fucking awesome. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Let's have some fun, dude. Like, exactly. Shit. And I it's love that you said about, that. Because as a top it's player... not being the best. Let, yeah, let's be honest. As a, a top player, I know you don't like me saying that, but I, I'm going to state my like how I feel, and we, you know this about me. Um, I love that you said that, because... Many top players, they won't admit it, and I'm not knocking them whatsoever. They are fucking top players for a reason. But I love that you said that, because it's when, what people aren't thinking about is exactly what you said. When we do have full 99 squads, I think you're going to see numbers like we were seeing before this patch. And that's just, in a, my opinion, and maybe, do you think that's accurate? I would guess so. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like a lot of the cards, like I have had zero problems hitting home runs with Joey Gallo post-patch, and he's got 110 power. So a lot of the cards that are juiced power-wise are still performing the same for me. So I love it. I think, yeah. But, okay, well, I think that's a good time for us to go ahead and wrap up, guys. Now, don't forget, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that sub button no matter what channel you're on. No D's on. These are coming weekly or bi-weekly. That'll be announced in the next episode. But don't forget, the video on how to go through Showdown with a faster method, be, that'll be linked below as well. But, guys, we will be doing more than just talking about patches and stuff like this. We'll have special guests. We'll be doing interviews. So stay tuned for that. So, guys, this has been episode one of The Backstop with Seabrev and BC. Any closing words, Seabrev, before we jump out of here? Appreciate you guys watching. Much love. Thanks, BC. It's going to be a good ride, man. I appreciate it, Seabrev. Pleasure to do this show with you and uh, look forward to many more. So, guys, hope you enjoy everything. Appreciate you all watching. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Look out, there might be a special guest, too. But until then, guys, I have much love. Catch you on the next See one. It. It's been our first episode of The Backstop. Episode one in the books. Look forward to episode two. Peace out, guys.